Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, we're gonna look at how to do a reverse filter on a list of items with a partial match. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but basically we're going to do the opposite of what we did in the last video with filtering for a list of items. So in this case here, uh, we have a list of city names here in column A, and then over in our filter list, we have a list of words here. And we wanna look for these words in each city name to see if the word exists in the city name. So in this case here, we see we have the word hills here in our filter list. So we wanna filter for that and show a filter on this uh, item here, this city name, because it contains the word hills in it. Same with this one down here, it contains the name city or the word city in it right here. And we do have that in our filter list. So we would filter for that item. So we're really just looking for any of these words here in this list in our list of city names here and if it contains a match then we will filter for it and that's what we're doing here in column c and we use a formula for this and it's kind of a big long ugly formula but i want to go ahead and try and explain it so let me move my filter list over here and we'll jump into the formula so here's the formula here it's really a lookup formula and we're also using this search function right here so i'm going to start from the inside and work our way out and we're going to first talk about the search function or this part of the formula right here so the search function just has two arguments which are the find text and in this case this is the table of names or words in our filter list so that's what we're referencing right here i am using excel tables you do not have to use excel tables for this uh, but it just makes it a little easier and then the second argument is the within text, which is the city name. So, and that's in cell A2 right here. So really what this is doing is searching for each of these items in this list within this city name over here. And it's going to return the uh, character number where it finds that particular item, if it does find an item. And we can see this, we can see an example of this. So I'm gonna select cell C3 here uh, in the uh, evaluate formula menu. So if we go up to uh, the formulas tab here and then go to evaluate formula, that's gonna open this evaluate formula window. And then we can uh, evaluate the formula. I'm gonna click the evaluate button once and then click it again twice. And that will start evaluating the formula and we can see here within the search function, we first have a list of all of those words in our filter list right here. And uh, that's in an array. And then we have a comma, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a comma there. And then it displays that uh, city name that we're looking for in cell C3 right here, Agora Hills. So what this is doing is it's just going through each of these city names right here. Uh, or I'm sorry, each of these words and then searching uh, within Agora Hills to find a match. And so I'm gonna hit evaluate again. And we can see here when we evaluate that, we're getting errors here because there's no match. But then right here on the uh, fourth item, we get an eight returned. And that's because it found the word hills in uh, starting in the eighth character of our city name right here. So Gora Hills right here, this, eighth, this is the eighth character where it finds the start of the name hills. And so it returns an eight right there. So that is really the result there of our search function. And then the next step is to go to the lookup function. So now the lookup function is going to perform a lookup on this string of values right here. And it's going to do that with this weird number right here. This is actually a number, this one E plus 100 uh, just returns a number and it's a really large number using this scientific notation. It's kind of like the biggest, one of the biggest numbers you can create really in Excel. Uh, and really what that is doing is it's just returning a large number and uh, the lookup function is just gonna go through this string of values until it finds that number, that really large number. And if it doesn't find that number, uh, if it gets all the way to the end, so it gets all the way to the last value here and it doesn't find that number, then it's just gonna go back to the left here until it finds a number, any number, and then it'll return 
that number. So it's really just gonna return the last number here in this string. And the, again, that search function is returning a number for us. So that's all this is doing. It's kind of a tricky workaround here, but that's really what it's doing. So we just want a really large number there in case we have a lot of text in our column here of city names or whatever it is you're looking up. You might have a really long string of text there. So you wanna make sure this number that we're looking up is larger than the longest uh, string or the length of those strings within that column. So that's all that's doing there. And it's then going to return a value, the value from this result vector, which is again, our list of filter items right here, E2 to E7. And since it's looking for or going to return this item here with the eight in it, because that's the last number it finds, that's one, two, three, four. That's the fourth item in the list from this result vector here, which again is this filter list over here. So one, two, three, four, it's going to return the word hills there. So if we hit evaluate again, that's exactly what we see right here. And then that's wrapped in the if error function. So if it doesn't find a match, it's gonna return an error. And then the if error function, in this case, how we have it set up, is just gonna return a blank if it returns an error, if it doesn't find any of those items in the filter list in our list of city names. Okay, so that is how that uh, formula works. I just wanted to try and explain it in case you wanted to uh, learn more about these functions and formulas and how they all work. And now the nice part is once we have that formula in place, we can just filter for uh, or filter out the blanks. We can do that from here or from the text filters it does not equal blank. Uh, and then click OK. And now we have a list of items or a filter for all of those items that contain that partial match. So any of the items here in our filter list will now be filtered for if any of the city names contain any of the words in our filter list. Now, it's also important to note that the search function that we're using here is not case sensitive. So this is not case sensitive. If you did want to make the search case sensitive, that means uh, uppercase and lowercase, it's going to evaluate those. We can change this to find. So instead of search, we can use the find function and I'll just uh, change that and hit enter. And we can now see here we have a blank uh, where we were looking up the word would before. Uh, we were doing that with a capital W. And since this is a lowercase w here, it's not finding that as a match. So the find function there uh, will be case sensitive. And uh, you can just change that to search if you do not care about case sensitivity. And then that would find would in Brentwood here, even though the cases don't match. Now we can also set the results to true and false like we saw in the last video if we just want to uh, show that this does contain any partial match or doesn't. So instead of returning the city names here, if we just want to return a true and false at the end of our formula out here, we can just say not equals. So that's the not equals less than greater than sign. And then uh, just two double quotes there, two quotation marks uh, for a blank. So does not equal blank, hit enter, and then we'll get uh, trues and falses. So then we can go filter for either true or false. We'll filter for all the trues to see all of those that do match our filter list. And then you can also use this technique uh, in a pivot table to group items in a pivot table as well. So if I undo that and instead do, I sh show our city, our partial matches here from our filter list, if we were to insert a pivot table here, I'll just go quickly insert a pivot table on a new sheet, and we can now add this uh, partial match field to the rows area. So we get a list of all of our partial match items here. And maybe we just want to do a count of cities so now we can see all of our account of all of the cities that have this partial match and this is a list of all the cities in california that i pulled from wikipedia so now we can see that there's 15 cities in california with the name city in the city or 12 cities only 12 cities with the name beach in the city name i would have thought there would be more than that in california so that's just some interesting stuff you can quickly do with a pivot table with actually grouping this uh, list based on that reverse lookup and that on that partial match so it, again it's a bit of a complex formula here but it's definitely some powerful stuff when doing some of these more advanced type of lookups and partial matches to help with our filtering if you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. 
If you are watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.